Released in 1984, King's Quest remains a groundbreaking adventure title. One of, if not the first adventure games to feature animated graphics, its bright fairy tale world could be explored in 3D. For the time, this was really exciting and innovative. Players use the keyboard to move and type commands. If you want to move a rock, for instance, you just type move rock. Just make sure you're standing on the correct side. The plot is the stuff of timeless adventure. King Edward sends his knight, Sir Graham, that's you, out into the kingdom of Daventry to recover three magical treasures and restore the kingdom to glory. These treasures are the magic mirror guarded by a fire-breathing dragon, the protective shield held by leprechauns, and the chest of gold kept by a giant. After exploring the land, solving puzzles, and snagging the loot, you return to Castle Daventry where King Edward promptly and conveniently dies and you earn your crown. Long live King Graham. The game is meant to be played at a leisurely pace, encouraging players to explore the world and ponder the sometimes difficult and obscure puzzles. But in this video, we will explore the history of speedrunning this classic adventure game. This is the any% percent speedrunning world record progression of King's Quest, Quest for the Crown. We won't be discussing the visually stunning but commercially unsuccessful SCI remake, nor will we be talking about the adorable Sega Master System version. We will also not be examining the AGD Interactive Fan Remake, and we will not be delving into the so far unloved 100% category. Other videos for other times, perhaps. You should also know that runners do not use the original 1984 release of the game. It's exceptionally slow, since each screen needs to be redrawn as shown here in the IBM PC Jr. version, not very appealing as a speedrun. Instead, we use the release from 1987 version 2.0F, which added pull-down menus and does not have the screen redraw. This is the version you'll find in Steam and GOG if you buy the game today. The very first world record was set by Jarski in mid-2015 with a time of 24 minutes and 42 seconds. Unfortunately, we have no video of this historic time. We only have Jarski's comments, which do give us an indication of the route. There are two ways to reach the giant guarding the chest. One is to solve a notoriously fiendish word-scrambling puzzle to guess this character's name, earning you some magic beans, which you plant to grow a beanstalk and then climb to the clouds. If you fail the puzzle, the game takes pity on you and gives you a key, which you then use to unlock a door and walk up some cave stairs. Jarski mentions climbing the beanstalk and how difficult that is. Jarski's not wrong. Once you get to the top of this area, you can wait until the giant gets tired and falls asleep, or if you've found the slingshot and pebbles, you can just murder him to death. Jarski mentions the giant sleeping, so we know the pacifist route was taken in this run. There's also the statement, King's Quest is heavily RNG, which is unfortunately painfully accurate. We'll get to these random elements as they come up, but just one example for now. Jarski mentions the witch who terrorizes part of the forest. You can go vigilante and push her into her cauldron, but this is optional, complicated, and long. First, you need to enter the witch's house when she's not there, which only happens 49.8% of the time. Then, you need to hide and wait for her to come back, which happens 71.7% .7 of the time. Finally, walk over, push her in, and you've got a tasty witch stew. It's impossible to know whether Jarski actually did all of this, or just entered the house when it was empty and grabbed the cheese from the cupboard. You give this cheese later to a ravenous rat in order to get past him. Let's move on then to our first recorded speedrun, Vise of Legends 9002, moderator of the King's Quest series, playing the game on March 14th, 2016. Vise gathers a few items at the beginning, like a golden walnut and this pouch of diamonds hidden inside a tree stump. Why is there a bag of diamonds in a tree stump? Who knows, there's treasure just lying around everywhere in Daventry. 
This lets Vise skip the witch house because we can give the cave rat the diamonds instead of the cheese. You just end up losing points because it's not the best solution. Vise also purposely fails the Rumpelstiltskin riddle, so he gets the key instead of the magic beans. No more beanstalk. At one point in the run, you need to get to the bottom of this well, which you can accomplish by lowering the rope and then climbing down, or you can just type climb bucket and the bucket will instantly lower because apparently Graham is packing some serious weight in that pixel caboose. After grabbing the mirror, it's time to hitch a ride on an eagle. The game actually calls it a bird and some FAQs call it a condor. I, I, I don't know, look at this thing, you tell me what it is. You need the eagle to appear on this screen in order to jump to its large talons and hitch a ride. Each time you enter the screen, there's only about a 50-50 chance that the eagle will appear. No eagle means leaving the screen and trying again. In this run, Vise takes nearly a full minute to complete the process. Following the recovery of the magic shield, Vise uses the key, climbs the stairs, until finding the slingshot and killing the poor giant in cold blood. Though cruel, this is faster than waiting for him to fall asleep. With all three treasures in hand, Vise ends with a time of 11 minutes and 50 seconds. Now, you've probably noticed that Graham is moving slowly. Very slowly. To understand why, we need to discuss how the leaderboards were set up in those days. And to discuss that, we need to take a quick detour into... PC Emulation. Most of us aren't lucky enough to have a spare Tandy lying around. Trying to run the game bare bones in Windows 10 just doesn't work. If you want to play PC games from this era, you'll need an emulator. If you buy the King's Quest bundle on GOG, for instance, it'll come with the Scum VM emulator pre-configured. Here's the difficulty. All emulators need to decide how fast to run these ancient games. Playing retro adventure games on modern CPU speeds will normally pretty much ruin the casual experience. Back in 2017, games from GOG came bundled with DOSBox, another well-known emulator. DOSBox configuration files contain the cycle setting, which sets the amount of CPU instructions emulated each millisecond. Basically, the higher this number, the faster the game runs. You can also set it to max cycles and the game will run at the maximum speed your CPU permits. The number is ultimately arbitrary, you can change it to whatever you want. So, how much speed should a speedrunner run if a speedrunner could set speed? At this point in our story, the King's Quest leaderboards were split into two categories. The first was called Default Cycles. Default Cycles meant either running the game at max speed or at 10,000 cycles. Why those settings? Vice told me his reasoning was that 10,000 and max cycles were the settings referred to over and over in the DOSBox README, so he figured those were the encouraged default settings. The second category was called Custom Cycles, and that was anything else. So with that in mind, the run we just watched was run at 10,000 cycles in the Default Cycles category. Why then is the movement so slow? Well, the game has three speed settings, slow, normal, and fast. Vice kept his run on normal speed the entire time because, as he told me, it was a better way of handling the movement to get used to routing during that time. Fast speed looks like this at 10,000 cycles, so I can understand why that would take more practice. Vice also informed me that he did practice a bit on fast, but never completed a run on that setting. So, what would happen if we slowed the emulator down, making fast speed more manageable? We turn now to Pack Sciences and a world record set a year later on February 8th, 2017. This one's being run at 3,000 cycles in the Custom Cycles category. Pack Sciences uses the same route as Vise, so the major improvement is playing most of the game on the fast setting, which is now more playable because of the lower emulation cycles. There's some normal speed when we enter the well, because Graham runs out of air if you waste enough time. At fast speed settings, it only takes about three seconds for Graham to succumb to the murky depths. Pack Sciences stays in normal, tossing water on this huge imposing dragon. Grab the magic mirror, and we've got treasure one done. The eagle shows up on the third cycle in this run, which is not bad, but not optimal either. The leprechauns leave us alone because we picked up that clover earlier. Steal their magic shield, and that's treasure number two. Later, use the key in the hobbit door and climb the stairs. Slingshot the giant, grab the chest, open the chest, 
and skedaddle back down. A few moments later, back at the castle, we bow to King Edward with a time of 5 minutes and 56 seconds, a world record in the custom cycles category and half the time of Vice's default cycles world record. But what if we could harness the power of max cycles? That's exactly what runner Sillier would achieve on October 4th, 2017. The way the game is programmed, slow and normal speeds are tied to real time. But on fast speed, Graham moves as fast as your CPU allows, unrestricted by real time. On faster CPUs then, Graham will move increasingly faster until you get to speeds like this. By setting the cycles to max, Graham's speed to fast, and only using normal speed to reposition, Sillier is able to zip around the map. In fact, we still call these movements zips. There are still many places where he slows down, like this screen with the pebbles, because running into that river means death. Or again, this pesky section in the well. Sillier cycles the bird screen three times before it appears, and then does some fancy speed switching to manipulate its position. Later in the run, Dead Giant, a little bit of mistyping which is a constant threat in this game, he zips down the stairs, an obvious time improvement in that section, back to the castle, bow to the king, and we've got an 855 default cycles world record. Wait. Moving that fast to where you can barely see Graham move? Isn't that cheating? Isn't that unfair taking advantage of modern CPU speeds? Actually, no. CPUs were improving so rapidly that machines released within a year or two of the game could already achieve these speeds. Here's the TAS of the game, for example, which runs at only 20 megahertz. So, why do you remember Graham moving slower even on the fast in-game speed setting? You probably either played the game on a slower machine back in the day, maybe around 4 to 8 megahertz, or you got the game from Steam or GOG. These distributions artificially throttle the speed, so the game remains playable for the casual gamer. Remember, the zip speed is a result of the game's internal, unhacked programming. So, no, actually, running at max speed is not cheating, and is faithful to the way the game ran on many computers when it came out. But, even though we're running the game on faster cycles, there's still a good portion of the run happening at normal speed. Overall, this is slower than running the game at 3000 cycles in the custom cycles category. For more development there, we turn again to Sillier on February 14th, 2018. There's more precise movement than Pac Science's previous custom cycles world record of 556, though still with some stucks and overshooting here and there. Sillier gets a first cycle eagle with the same speed switching strat he used before, and later bows to a retimed 436. An impressive one minute improvement over the previous custom cycles world record. Now we've seen improved movement, improved execution, and improved RNG. However, runners had been following the same route since Vice's run two years earlier. But that was about to change, with a discovery that would change King's Quest speedrunning forever. August 2018 saw the introduction of runner Chuck Grody. What Chuck discovered was that the magic shield, the one you recover from the leprechauns, protects you from the giant. The shield also protects you from other baddies, but apparently no one knew about its effectiveness against the big dude in the sky. Or, if they did, they were running the game at a speed where it was faster to give in to your homicidal urges, so the shield protecting you just wasn't a factor. The giant will walk towards Graham until they meet. If Graham has the shield, the game's code tells the giant to wander, walking around at random. Runners have to hope that the giant falls asleep near them, or in a place where it's easy to zip to. With this information, Chuck rerouted the game entirely and achieved this world record run on August 5th, 2018 in the default cycles category, running at max cycles. The pebbles were only useful for slingshotting the poor sky giant, so we don't need to grab those anymore. Chuck also realized that he could grab a golden egg from this tree right at the beginning of the route, which you can use instead of the diamonds in the stump. Chuck refines Sillier's eagle jump technique, mashing the jump key and hoping the eagle will pick him up. In this run, the eagle shows up on the third screen cycle and Chuck catches the bird on the first try. And then, there's something we need to talk about. 
In a conversation with Lumophile, another King's Quest speedrunner we'll get to later, I asked if there was anything he wanted to share for this video. The very first thing he mentioned was that many, 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 many runs died to dwarf. This evil run ending dwarf. He can appear on your way up the stairs, though thankfully not on your way down, and has a 59.76% chance of showing up to snatch one of your hard-earned treasures. If he steals one of the main quest items, you can't get them back, making the game unwinnable. You can outrun him by walking back down and then back up, but each cycle, of course, eats up precious time. To show just how frustrating this can get, here's unedited, though sped up, footage of me saving before the dwarf screen, then restoring if the RNG isn't favorable. Granted, I'm not trying to speedrun here, but it still takes a really long time before I get a break. Back to Chuck Grody's run, there's no dwarf on the way up the first time, but Chuck accidentally takes a nosedive off the upper stairs, and we get one dwarf on the redo. Chuck ignores the slingshot, zips onto the screen with the giant, this time knowing the shield will protect him. Chuck gets excellent giant positioning. You'll also notice he doesn't open the chest. As Lumophile explained to me, runners previously thought opening the chest was necessary, but it turns out to be completely optional. Chuck biffs the zip over the castle bridge the first time, which means insta-death. A reload later, the run ends on an impressive 426, a 10 second improvement over the previous world record. With further zip refinement though, how low could the record go? Could we see a sub four minute time? On August 19th, 2018, we would find out. Chuck, together with Lumophile, worked on a series of improved zips that resulted in this record-shattering speedrun. Previously, after getting the egg, Graham fell out of the tree, stunning him for a few seconds. In this run, Chuck maneuvers Graham to zip back down the tree, avoiding the stun. By doing this zip at Rumpelstiltskin to the rock, Graham is in the perfect position to pick up the key without walking to it at normal speed. At the well, instead of typing climb bucket and exit bucket, Chuck found out that the parser will accept go pail and exit pail instead, saving seven keystrokes. He saves another keystroke by typing toss water instead of throw water. There's another zip here at the dragon, where before Graham just walked forward at normal speed. Chuck misses the first eagle and has to cycle the screen a few times before getting his second chance. At the mushroom, in the previous run, he had to YOLO the mushroom zip, relying on reflexes to stop before rushing into the deadly river. Here, Chuck's found a more reliable zip setup. On the way back to the castle, Chuck nails the zip over the bridge this time, and the four-minute barrier had been devastated, a final time of three minutes and 26 seconds. At the end of August 2018, a number of King's Quest runners had become dissatisfied with the rule about bowing. If you go into the throne room and just wait, eventually King Edward will rise and the game will end. On lower cycles, it's faster to bow, so it made sense to have the rule be time ends on bowing. But now, at fast speed and max cycles, Edward starts speaking almost instantly after you enter the room. Runners were forced to slow down in the run's very last moments, and if they didn't, potential world record runs were invalidated. I think I had a 422 earlier, but I forgot to bow to the king. <laughs> There was also dissent about the leaderboard structure. One side argued that having two separate categories was unnecessary and confusing. It's any percent, why not just take the run that's fastest? And if you can figure out a way to finish the game faster on a different cycle setting, great. There was also confusion about what default cycles actually meant, considering that commercially, the game was being distributed at 3000 cycles, but that wasn't a default cycles category setting. Another side argued that the categories were not actually confusing, and it was helpful to have different leaderboards for different speeds. After what I would charitably call a spirited debate, the leaderboards were simplified. No more categories per cycle, just any percent and hundred percent. 
Cycles were still distinguishable, only now as a variable instead of a different category. Additionally, the rule about time ending on bowing was removed and changed to the first text box of King Edward's death. Finally, the community asked Chuck Grody to step up as an additional moderator of the series in order to facilitate these changes. Somewhat unfortunately, Chuck was new to moderating leaderboards, and in the reorganization, a mistake was made. Instead of archiving some of the old runs by rejecting them, Chuck mistakenly deleted all but the fastest run for each runner. The eagle-eyed among you may have noticed references to these in the live splits of the world records we've already showcased, like a 429 by Chuck Grody, a 1001 by Pac Sciences, a 948 by Sillier. Some of these may have been PBs in the same session that were just never submitted, but what's clear is that at least some of the runs were accidentally removed. As often happens with any community, not everyone will be content with changes. Vise, for example, would lose interest in running the series and told me that executing the ultra-fast zips felt like coding and not really running the game. He remains a moderator for the series to this day, even though he is no longer an active runner. So, who would be the first to set a new record following these monumental changes? On September 2nd, 2018, Lumophile would achieve this run, employing improved, more confident movement. Something else you start to see runners doing around this time is retyping replacement. You see, when you press F3, the game retypes your last command. This is really helpful for misspellings, for instance. However, anything new you've typed into the parser will stay. For example, let's say I type look egg and press enter to send the command. Then I type grab with a space at the end, and then F3. The game sees that the first five characters are taken and fills in the rest with egg from the last command. I would end up with grab egg. You can see Lumafile do this in practice with the commands get nut, then open, and F3. There are a few more refined zips, like this one to the clover, Lumo gets some less than desirable eagle luck. It takes until the fifth eagle before he can bum a ride. And it took forever. Still with overall better movement, better typing, no dwarves, oh. decent giant placement, and yes, no bowing at the end of the game. This run ended at a healthy 308. Whatever, dude, I don't care. That's record. Not to leave his title unchallenged, Chuck Grody would return to the game on December 5th, 2018 with a significant reroute. Previously, after getting the nut, runners would zip right to get to the troll bridge. This involved starting and stopping repeatedly, so they didn't overshoot the screen. In this world record, Chuck zips left, eventually hitting a tree stump. From there, you can just press diagonal down to shoot across screens and end up at the well. The only downside, your movement can be stopped by the sorcerer, whose presence brings up text boxes you have to dismiss, and who can also freeze you in place for a moment. That's obviously not a great thing in a speedrun. He has a 73.7% .7 chance of appearing. You also cross the screen with the eagle, so if it appears, you'll need to dismiss that text box too. Traversing the well at this point also means zipping from the dragon's cave to the troll bridge, since we skipped that earlier. These zips are a little janky, but they work. The zip from there to the eagle is pretty direct, but it does involve hitting this screen, where there's a chance a fairy can appear and grant a protective blessing. This introduces dialogue boxes that need to be dismissed, slowing you down a bit, just like with the sorcerer. The fairy has the same chance of appearing as the eagle, 49.8%. Chuck was on pace to break the three-minute barrier when this happened. In trying to zip back to the cave, he was just a few pixels off and Graham fell to his death. It only cost a few seconds, but that was enough. That would have been world record. Yep. This might even, this will probably still be, but 
All right, well, that's world record. Final time of three minutes and two seconds. Undeterred, just a few days later on December 8th, Chuck would perform much better on the giant screen and proceed to victory. Two minutes, 53 seconds, the three minute barrier broken. Chuck, however, characterizes this run as sloppy in my opinion, with mistakes in that run like moving a little too far on the castle door or some suboptimal RNG like three dwarves on the stairs, it's easy to imagine even more improvements. A few months later on February 26, 2019, Lumophile would answer that call. His run would feature some additionally optimized zips, like this one from the tree to the nut, or this zip to the clover, and after a one cycle eagle, oh boy, no dwarves on the stairs, Lumo got this giant placement. Oof. I don't know if I trust it. Whew. And the crown again was his. Oh, do we really? I thought Chuck. No way. <laughs> Man. One would expect a response from Chuck, of course, but I doubt anyone could have predicted the massive time reduction on the next world record. Wow, really? After a long grind and really getting the movement in the refined route down to muscle memory, Chuck would achieve this speed run. Aside from the massive improvements in movement, there are also micro zip optimizations like this one at the beginning, which eliminates a speed change. or this one from the mirror to the clover. There's also a really interesting trick that happens in the well, one of the few remaining slow parts of the run. Oh, we did it, Reddit. Let's watch that again, a little bit slower. Chuck positions Graham over this bottle, switches speeds to fast, and then immediately hits escape and switches back to normal speed. It's risky, but it works. Later, a one cycle eagle, zero dwarves, and a safer zip set up in Cloudland so that Graham runs into a tree. It's also possible to cycle the giant RNG here if needed. After returning to the castle, Chuck would complete the game in two minutes and 16 seconds, an astonishing gain of over half a minute. At the end of this impressive run, Chuck poses a thought. Any of you guys betting men? Because I think I can get this under two minutes. Could the runners achieve such a thing? Would a sub two minute King's Quest be possible? That idea would be tested a month later on April 13th, 2019, again by Chuck. Earlier, during a practice session, Lumophile had discovered an even better way to do the well zip. Let's watch it. And let's watch it again in slow motion. Chuck moves left enough that he will collide with the tip of the bottle as he swims down. As soon as he switches to fast, he needs to hit seven, the upper left diagonal, within just a few frames. If he fails this, he drowns, but if it's timed just right, he'll hit the bottle, then zip up through the cave tunnel. After nailing the well zip, a one cycle eagle, no dwarves, and favorable giant positioning, Chuck enters the castle to fanfare and earns his one minute, 58 second run, shattering the two minute barrier. Two months later, Chuck would lower the record yet again with very few interruptions, a one cycle eagle, and an okay giant position. This run also incorporated a very minor zip optimization in the dragon cave that I discovered. Instead of zigzagging around the top of this stalagmite, you can just zip down and for some reason, that's close enough to throw the water. 
But my new favorite strat, turning the sound off. You see, with the sound on, trumpets announce your arrival at the castle, but with the sound off, the fanfare doesn't play and you save around two seconds. Final time, 155, a three second improvement. In the run description, Chuck notes that he can probably improve this, but it'll be difficult. Of course, when a runner says that, you'll know they'll probably improve it right away, which is exactly what happened a week later, shaving the record down to 147. This featured another small zip optimization I discovered, one from the stairs to the castle, which meant you no longer had to switch speeds at the end. This does introduce the chance of losing a fraction of a second to this elf, who shows up 33.86% of the time, but more often than not, you end up saving around a second or two over the old zip. He would finish out the month of June 2019 with this run, where he has to cycle the eagle screen many times and catches the bird on its second appearance. No dwarves, a pretty average giant position to be honest, but still ending with a very healthy, more than respectable, 1 minute, 44 seconds. So, what could we do next? How could this record be brought even lower? On February 2nd, 2020, a blogger named Edenwaith dropped a link in our Discord to a post detailing many glitches in King's Quest. In that blog post, there's an intriguing description of the water walking glitch. If you move Graham so his feet are one pixel below the bottom of the screen, he can walk across water without drowning. This could potentially lead to sequence breaks, and it also means it's possible to glitch through some screens like this one. The only problem with water walking is that you need to switch to a slower speed in order to line up your feet properly. In the current route, even if you get suboptimal RNG, you're still zipping at top speed through most of the run. As it stands today, the so-called Jesus route is still slower overall than the more secular, non-miraculous route. But we're working on it, so who knows? You may also be curious about whether the task for the game has anything to tell us. You saw it earlier in this video, and here it is again, this time playing at 20% speed. Created by Dr. D2K9, it completes the game in a scorching 18.3 seconds. A huge accomplishment, but unfortunately, the movement in the task is simply too precise to yield any information useful to a real-time run. And then, on February 16th, 2020, Chuck Grody achieved this run. He starts out strong, having years of muscle memory under his fingertips. One improvement early in the route was a zip that I found from the egg tree to the walnut tree without having to switch speeds, so that helped here. By the time Chuck reaches the magic mirror, he's a full two seconds ahead of his previous world record but the major RNG sections were still all ahead of him. After a run-in with the fairy and a three-cycle eagle, he's now two seconds behind when he lands on this screen. By the time he reaches the save point before the evil run-ending dwarf, he's managed to gain a precious second back. But the previous world record had no dwarves. Would luck be on his side again? Not entirely. One dwarf on the stairs, not a huge time loss, but just before the final zip to the giant, he's about a second and a half behind. The only thing that could save this run would be the perfect giant RNG. Most of the time, you need to adjust your speed to normal either to get to the giant or to position Graham to zip back to the cave. But in some rare spots, it's possible to zip to the giant, then immediately to the cave. Spots like this one. No normal speed adjustments needed. By the time he gets back to the cave, Chuck is a full eight seconds ahead. All that's left to do is cross the castle bridge without drowning and for Chuck to make his way to the throne and victory. Final time, one minute. 38 seconds, and the current, still standing, world record.
But could this amazing speed run be performed even faster? Let's examine how. For this first one, it's important to know that time for the run begins on reset. However, the game remembers the menu position between resets, so it's always been allowed that you can set your speed to fast, restart the game, and then just press escape and enter to select fast instead of having to do any menuing. What was also discovered after the world record is that the F3 repeat text memory also persists between resets. So you can type move rock, press enter, and then restart. Instead of having to type out move rock in the new run, you can just press F3, saving eight keystrokes or a little less than a second. Chuck was also interrupted by the sorcerer, so if he managed to get optimal RNG, that would save about two thirds of a second. Later, he mistypes the word mirror and makes some extra inputs, costing him around two seconds or so. He gets the dreaded fairy blessing, which wastes around half a second. There's another second lost to typing the word high too early. It takes Chuck about six seconds to catch the eagle, so let's cut that in half and estimate that you could maybe save three seconds there. The dwarf on the stairs costs maybe a second. And if you wanted to go super stupid risky, you could potentially skip saving before the dwarf, hoping for perfect RNG, saving a little less than a second. Of course, if that doesn't work, then you've thrown away your entire run. By my conservative estimation, all of this together could save around nine seconds. Of course, new zips could be found, reroutes made, but with current tech, Sub 130 is possible, although it would take a serious grind. Chuck is even more optimistic, and he believes that 125 is possible, with perfect typing, execution, and RNG. One more thing. Over the course of researching this video and talking with the other King's Quest speedrunners, the community acknowledges that the ultra-fast zip speeds can be a little intimidating for newcomers. So, we've decided to run a little bit of an experiment. The game now has a Scum VM category, which allows only runs completed on the official Scum VM emulator. Graham now moves at a speed that seems a little bit more reasonable. It also means that if you already own the game, you don't need to do any additional setup, aside from game capture software like OBS and a timer. If this sounds like something you'd be interested in, please submit a run. We'd love to have you. And also because we're planning on deleting the category if there isn't enough interest. And this is where the leaderboards stand today. One can only wonder how Roberta Williams, creator and designer of the series, would react knowing her game of lengthy exploration and discovery has been shaved down to an experience less than two minutes long. This has been the history of King's Quest, Quest for the Crown, any percent speedrunning. Thanks for watching, keep those adventurer caps handy, and I'll see you next time.